In the past, we've built quite a few underwater drones. They worked great, as you can see here, but they all had one major problem. It's this. They couldn't move side to side. It's like a difference between an airplane and a helicopter. An airplane can go only forward, while a helicopter can move in all directions. Well, have you ever seen those pretty shots when a flying drone is flying around a building with the camera pointed at the building? Well, you can only achieve that if your drone has side-to-side -side motion. Great, so the next logical question is, what motor configuration is optimal for this? So, there exist six so-called degrees of freedom, which define the complete range of movements for any solid object. They consist of three translational motions and three rotational motions. For an underwater drone, the translational motions are called surge, heave and sway, left and right movement. So adding the ability to actively control sway is what we're after. The rotational motions are called yaw, so turning left and right, pitch, looking up and down, and roll, it's like turning side to side, so six degrees of freedom in total. For our drone, basically any kind of movement that it can possibly perform can be expressed with a combination of these. So the most maneuverable underwater drone has to have independent movement control in all six of these degrees of freedom. You could ask, <clears throat> you could ask, why not just use a motor configuration from a flying drone to power an underwater drone? A normal drone can move up, down, left and right, forward and backwards, and it can also pitch, roll and yaw. Doesn't this have six controllable degrees of freedom? Well, no. A flying drone cannot pitch or roll while staying in one place. If it tries to increase its pitch, it will naturally fly backward. When the drone goes left, it needs to tilt. It cannot tilt and not go left. That's the problem, right? It has four controllable degrees of freedom. We want a drone that will be able to stay upright like this. Just... Right? Mm -hmm. And what's really interesting, if you use normal thrusters which work in both directions, it's not possible to have more independently controlled degrees of freedom than the number of thrusters you have in your drone. CPS-5, for example, has five motors and so five controllable degrees of freedom. The one which is missing is sway. But you can also have less controllable degrees of freedom than your number of thrusters. Take Blue ROV2, for example. Even though it has six thrusters, it can only do these five movement types. It can't really pitch. Another very interesting drone is the Chasing M2. It has eight thrusters, each one at this kind of 45 degree angle, so it has eight thrusters and six degrees of freedom. Fifish V6, I think, is one of the most interesting designs out there, because it can move in all six degrees of freedom using only six motors. I really like their design, though the very large angle of these thrusters makes me doubt the speed of the side-to-side -side motion. For our prototype, we just decided to caveman this design and use four motors, like in a flying drone, to control the roll, pitch and up and down movement. And then we added four additional motors that control the sway, surge and yaw. So this is a configuration that has less controllable degrees of freedom than its number of motors. This has its advantages, though. For example, if this thruster dies or gets blocked by something, the drone will still theoretically be able to navigate in six degrees of freedom, although a little bit slower. Redundancy is cool. So, after spending a couple of weeks in Fusion 360, this is the design I came up with. I'm going to explain everything once I start building it. We still decided to go for the acrylic pipe and the body, similar to the CPS-5. Comparing the two drones, the new one is a little bit bigger than the old one. It should have roughly two times the forward thrust though, since there are twice as many motors pointing in the forward direction. We intentionally made this design more blocky than the CPS-5, because for one thing, I didn't have to spend months designing a hydrodynamic shape, and it also allowed me to CNC this frame out of polycarbonate, which should be much more sturdy than using 3D prints. It's quite strong.
not gonna happen. I actually wonder how it will affect the speed, because the drag of this blocky body here will probably be much larger than the hydrodynamic 3D printed one, but on the other hand its thrust will be twice as much. Before I got to building, we needed to choose the correct color though. I wanna die. Why did I ask you about this? <laughs> After much deliberation, we were stuck on whether the drone should be pink. So this is the pink version, right? Or blue. That would be the blue one, right? Yeah, I, the, the, I like it actually. <laughs> so we decided to flip a coin. This is pink? Yes. Okay, come on. Pink. <laughs> <laughs> That's by the way some crazy ass person from Alibaba selling a pink robot. And it's also apparently for kids. 1.5 meters. What? What the fuck? It's bigger than your child. <laughs> If I have a daughter, I'm just gonna buy her this like for her birthday or something. And it's only $700 a piece. Now, after we settled for pink, let's 3D print all of the parts needed for the body. I use this huge CNC mill to machine the two big polycarbonate plates that are the main structural components of the drone. It didn't work out at first, since my sheet started to detach from the build plate in the middle of milling. So, I came back a week later with a different polycarbonate sheet. This time, I attached it using some wood screws instead of the puny clamps. I had no problem with the sheet going off the build plate this time. For components such as LEDs, pressure sensor and the underwater connector, I used the same process we use for the CPS-5 components. So I covered all of the water sensitive parts in epoxy, I especially liked the way the waterproof LEDs came out. Do you see better? Not really, no. For the thrusters I used some inexpensive off-the-shelf motors. They can work for a couple of months underwater, you just need to make sure that no salt will accumulate inside of them after you swim in salt water. Oh yeah. It's really amazing how much life you can get out of these inexpensive motors when you use them underwater. When it comes to the electronics, we used a very similar design to the CPS-5 electronics, but a little bit scaled up. For the battery, we went with a little bit higher capacity Samsung 30Q cells and arranged them in the 3S3P configuration, which gave us almost double the battery capacity. We used two 4-in-1 ESCs as the motor drivers and without any prior testing added this tiny fan to cool them. These are CPS-5 electronics and this is what we have now. I hope the electronics will not overheat. That's a lot of freaking wires. All right. Also, for this drone, we decided to design a camera tilting system with which you would be able to look up and down at any time, regardless of the orientation of your drone. For that, we bought this acrylic dome and an entire end cap from a company called ROV Maker. But after disassembling it and assembling it again, the dome cracked and it wasn't watertight anymore. We decided to order another one. Anyway, this is the camera tilting system I designed specifically for this dome. I spent like a day designing it and another day to print everything and put it all together. And it was really awesome. Look at how perfect this works. I think this looks great with the pink. We went for a similar end cap design to the one we had in the CPS-5. So, we did all of the usual end cap assembly we do for our drones, so we cut the cables, cover them all in epoxy. You can learn more about this process in our videos. And after the end caps were done, we tested them in our DIY pressure chamber and concluded that they will work. I think we can conclude that the end cap works. Then I had all of the parts ready and put everything together. Surprise! The dome we ordered from ROV Maker cracked again. Something must have been wrong with the material of the dome. So yeah, we can't really recommend ROV Maker. And later we actually noticed that most of their products are actually cheap knockoffs of Blue Robotics products. Anyway, I just decided to use the same polycarbonate we used for the body of the drone to cut a small window for the front of the pipe and use that instead of the dome. 
So unfortunately I had to dismantle my amazing camera tilting system for now. And by the way, the open source software that runs on our drones is called ArduSub and it's maintained by Blue Robotics. This software is really awesome because it allows you to set up the steering and control for an ROV like this one in a matter of a couple of minutes. So thank you very much Blue Robotics. Before I assembled everything, we confirmed that the drone works properly. What? I'm doing rigorous testing now. So this is the rigorous testing you were talking about? Yes. <laughs> Can you stop? Will it smell? Does it smell? Yes. Hmm. We can ignore this issue. <laughs> Despite that, I decided to ignore this issue and proceed with the assembly. Okay, so you need to stand Everybody. here and certify the smelling okay. because I'm not sure. Alright, I will be a sm sniffer. <laughs> <laughs> you need to certify this smell. Are you ready? Oh, it's already st uh, smells. Not anymore. It was one time sniff. Is sniffer ready? Yes. Maybe it always smells when you swim fast. Sm smelling. <laughs> Just smelling around. Right, uh, does it work? Yes, it works. But where does it smell? So we're just saying it's okay? We just said it's okay because we realized that it was actually one of the motors that overheated. Then we added some buoyancy foam, confirmed that the buoyancy of the drone is slightly positive, as it should be, and then decided to give it a test run in this plastic box. Perfect. Perfect. Do you see this? It's such a great drone. Ah! Can you try rotating it? <laughs> then we were finally ready for the real test. Welcome. Perfect. Hello. <laughs> On the first try, the drone worked perfectly. Normally when you build something, it's never that easy and something always breaks. So I guess this was just a stroke of luck. I don't know, man. I think we need to call it. I don't want to destroy it. The side-to-side -side motion was really good indeed, and the overall self-leveling and stabilization worked really well. Here is the drone operating while leveling at a custom angle. So then we decided to test how fast this drone is compared to the CPS-5. We tested this over an entire 25 meters of the length of the pool. By the way, it's so much easier to swim with this drone in a straight line because if it drifts off to the side a little bit, I can just use the joystick to move it from side to side and go back on track. Then we tested the CPS-5. Its average speed was about 2 meters per second. I think that's like 1 meter per second maybe. Yeah, it's slower, definitely it's slower. Ah. Okay. And the speed of the new one is below 1 meters per second, this much exactly. Okay, we can conclude that the drone is way less hydrodynamic, yes. therefore it's way slower. That's, that's right. <laughs> Later, we got access to a tool called AirShaper, with which we got to see the actual difference between the drag of both drones. So, would you say that compared to the last one, <laughs> but the drone is quite horrible? Yes, yes, this is... Uh... <laughs> Just looking at the red clouds, the red clouds actually indicate a loss of energy and this <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> that's Voter, the CEO of AirShaper, at least that's what he told us, and these are the drag coefficients for both drones. That's a really big difference here. First of all, the general shape is very boxy, and if you go from the front to the top, there's a 90 degree angle, which means that the water just jumps across and then lands again. No pressure, right? Yes, yes, because the air needs to accelerate, jump across and creates this suction effect. He was really helpful. In general, do you think that this design is hydrodynamic? 
It's quite okay. It's quite well, of course you can make it much much better. If you want to run computational fluid dynamic simulations in a cloud with really good detailed reports, AirShaper might be good for you even if you are a total beginner. Link to it in the description and thanks again Voter. So, actually, the 1 meter per second top speed is something that makes this drone basically unusable in real life conditions. <laughs> A sea current of 1 meter per second is actually not a large current and an ROV that can't operate in these kinds of currents is kind of useless. And so, if you want to build an underwater drone that we've been actually improving for the past couple of years, the CPS-5, that has been already built by multiple people and is actually usable in real life conditions, check out the CPS-5 online course. We'll teach you everything you need to know to build it, even if you haven't done anything like this before. The link is in the description. Anyway, after swimming for a couple of minutes in the water, we noticed some condensation appearing in the drone. Condensation! Um, I'm seeing why my condensation is I think we need to call it. I don't want to destroy it. Guess what? Turns out I was right earlier saying that something always breaks. But did it actually break? We thought that the drone was obviously leaking, so we took it back to our workshop. We've checked every single place where the leak might be. We've concluded that in the end, there wasn't a leak. <laughs> like for example, the water could be before in these holes, you know, because it was wet before. I mean, I did my best to dry it as best as I could, but I only had like an hour, so. A couple of drops of water were in the pipe before we took the drone to the pool, just by accident, and this caused the air inside of the pipe to contain a lot of water vapor that condensated on the cold walls of the pipe. There is an easy solution to this problem though. You can just use a little bit of silica gel and put it in your pressure-proof container. Then any moisture that would be present in the actual pipe will be sucked in by the silica gel. So, all in all, we think that this omnidirectional drone has its advantages, but CPS-5 has a far superior design. Remember to check out the CPS-5 course to build your own underwater drone with us. We are also going to upload all of the design files of the omnidirectional drone there as well. Thank you so much! The Titan submarine, right? This guy made a vlog from the Titan submarine. Yeah. And he shows, because they were doing like a test dive, to a very shallow depth, yes, so he like showed that. how the entire wall is is very wet because of the uh, condensation. Because because the ocean is very cold, right? That's the reason. So this is our Titan window here. 